My name is Gashar Jahan. I'm a computing student at Imperial College London. Hi, I'm Michael Kurtz, doing an MEng degree in computer science. I'm currently a second year student. We're in second year at the moment, and after the summer, we'll be in our third. Second year. I am from Southeast London. I'm from Thailand and I've always been living in Bangkok. I studied Imperial College London, but I live at home in South London. I'm a cricket fan and I love playing cricket. And as a competing student, naturally, I'm also into gaming. But most importantly, I love Formula One. I love following drivers and teams and the news. And race day, I love watching the races some qualifying. I, I love the whole thing. I like tinkering with stuff, be it internet standards or physical hardware. I'm looking forward to doing various projects this summer. Well, in this remote environment we find ourselves in, it's a bit hard to go outside. So I've been trying to catch up and well, host like virtual parties and game sessions to keep up with my friends and also have a chat with the people I've not really been able to catch up for a long time. Our project is called The Grid. Well, we love F1. The race, the drama, the people. But we realized that there was something missing during the race and we thought that we wanted the community to actively take part during the race, especially the newer members. So the grid promotes in-race participation by gamifying real-time events as they happen on the screen, allowing the community to cast their opinions as the events unfold. Dirty undercuts, high-speed overtakes, race-changing incidents, those are just a few things that you can share your opinions on. And coupled with a healthy dose of competition, the grid brings the excitement from the screen to you, the community. After exams finished, we were kind of struggling to come up with an idea. What we knew was we didn't really want to do something which was similar to other people. So that ruled out education and coronavirus related apps. So we had to go and list our interests and what we came out with was Formula One. And we knew a lot of people don't understand the race or maybe aren't engaged in the race. And we also knew there was a lot of data available in Formula One. So we decided to fill that gap and enhance the race experience. And talking to other Formula One fans, we realized the idea is really good. And it just took off from there. Early on, we decided that it would be good to focus on quality. So we had quite a few requirements. We wanted good code and Git hygiene, which we enforced with a standardized commit format and code style. We wanted a simple interface for working with the data. So we decided on a, using GraphQL as a data interface. We wanted a front end that didn't get in our way, which led us to Gatsby and React. And as a result, we had some technical challenges. So getting the database and Heroku layer, which managed it working, was a bit of work. Also difficult was integrating the data interface with the front end development. CI/CD setup and maintenance, whilst it was initially painful, has been working well so far. And the general interface development was quite a pain. It took quite a while for things to look exactly how we wanted them to look. In the grid, users are welcomed and encouraged to join the community. Here, I will sign up as Paul. During the race, events are pushed for user predictions. Like how an incident event has just appeared, in which I can interact with and cast my opinion that Sebastian Vessel is at fault. Users can vote concurrently and pick their drivers based on their opinion like how another user might think that another driver caused that incident. And at the same time, in a different part of the circuit, a DRS battle has just occurred, which I believe that Max Verstappen will come to win that battle. And as the results roll in, I can see that Vettel was the cause of that incident, scoring me 8 points, and that Raikkonen actually came out on top of that DRS battle, which scored me none. You score different points based on the outcome and the proportion of the community that got it correct. 
And as an indication, each result card lets users know how accurate the community was on the prediction. We also have a user-driven leaderboard, which was added for a sense of competition amongst users to improve gamification and interaction. At this point of the season, I'm currently 12th in the leaderboard, while my rival, Jensen, is second in the leaderboard. Jensen's accuracy on the previous event predictions were 40% overall, which hints at his prediction consistency so far. This leaderboard accentuates competition amongst users and encourages in-race engagement. The competition acts just like the championships their favorite drivers participate in. Users can also keep track of their favorite drivers as well. So navigating towards the settings section, I'm able to pick my favorite drivers. For example, I would like to keep my eye on Charles Leclerc, George Russell, and Valtteri Bottas throughout the races. Going back to the in-race page, we can see all my favorite drivers with minimal yet relevant statistics that help me aid my predictions during a race. For newer fans, a help guide is introduced as an in-race reference. For example, if I heard the commentator talk about a DRS overtake, I can navigate to this guide, go to the maneuver section, and look up what a DRS overtake actually is. There is also a season overview section, which highlights upcoming races and championship standings for both drivers and constructors. So from what I've experienced of the Formula 1 web app, it's been uh, a lot of fun. It's made watching races so much more engaging and exciting now, being able to compete with my friends. I had a great time using it. Hi guys, my name is Ismail. So far, the Grid app has been uh, a brilliant, a brilliant display of good ideas. I think the gamification of the F1 sport is a fantastic idea to get people more involved into F1. And I like the interface. I like the way that everything's been laid out. I think um, it's a great idea, and I can't wait to see what the developers have in store for us. Our app will introduce newer fans to Formula One through improving the race experience by getting viewers actively engaged. It is a new F1 initiative that could improve its sustainability by engaging newer fans, which in turn generates more revenue for F1. Finally, it makes F1 really fun and interactive as you're the commentator and predictor, and you're competing with your friends, which actually makes things matter. Throughout the project, we've been keen to talk with all fans, new and old, as well as other developers, we decided that working with our stakeholders was key to making a good website. Straight away we took in Vinayak and Inayat, two students from Surrey, who are great fans of the sport. We also took in Roxandra, who is new to Formula One. Other new fans that we had include Vlad and David, as well as older fans, Rafi and Nur, who are keen on helping us out. Finally, we've made contact with Avid, Zul and Sabeth, who are developers who have actually worked on and managed the current Formula One app. Talking to the Formula 1 fans, it's really fun because we enjoy Formula 1 and they enjoy Formula 1 so talking to them we get maybe a tiny bit carried away and start talking about the races but the important thing is they know what they like and what they don't like and that's really helping shape our application to be the best because they're telling us what's working and what isn't working and having that close relationship and when great ideas come out of these conversations we see our application improve that's a really fulfilling experience. Then we have the developers who have worked on the official F1 app. Talking with them, they have a wealth of knowledge and they've worked with all the data. They know what works, what doesn't work. And hearing them praise our gamification idea, that, that's really encouraging. And then they're helping us with their knowledge to help with the design. They help the design, they help improve our application. They're giving us ideas that we haven't necessarily thought about but now we're thinking about them and I think that's proving to be really vital to our project. We've had feedback from all three types of users. The older fans are really enjoying the competitive element we're putting in. The fact that they can predict and genuinely feel as if they're engaging in the race, it's proving to be really fun for them. And our newer fans are enjoying it too. They're actually understanding Formula One better, which was our intention. 
The events help them to know what to focus on and they're enjoying F1 more and more. The F1 developers also really like our idea. They think it can improve the experience, they see the benefit, and they see that this can bring people into the sport and really improve their experience. They're also giving a lot of feedback on design and shaping it to make sure the app works well and looks good. We've begun focusing on gamification thanks to their feedback. In the future, we would really like to better incorporate user-submitted data and also incorporate more official Formula 1 data. We think if we can sort of integrate with the other Formula 1 applications and create a sort of portfolio of applications which are both informative and actually complement the race, that would be really cool. And then we have what the F1 developers say is the treasure trove of Formula 1, which is all the official Formula 1 data. We want to get our hands dirty with that data. At such a granular level, we can improve interactive activities and provide insights which let the user better understand Formula 1. And over summer, we really want to add more gamification. If that means having a favourite driver, and if your favourite driver wins, you get more points. We really want to enhance that experience. We want to improve the gamification because that idea is basically what our app is. Yeah, I have an internship at Netcraft, so I'm looking forward to that. For summer, I have secured an internship at Netcraft, which is a cybersecurity company. I'm not quite sure yet what I'll be working on, but I'm looking forward to the challenge and uh, it's nothing like what I've done before. Security isn't something I looked into before, but that's why I'm doing it. I want to gain more experience in all computing fields. And of course, the internship will be remote and I'll be carrying it out at home because of coronavirus. Well, I'm excited to say I'll be joining American Express this summer to be working on finding creative ways to provide a seamless and meaningful experience for our card members. I'm looking forward to understanding the best practices and exploring how technology is being utilized at American Express, all from a practical perspective. And not to mention getting to work alongside the exciting people in the Amex tech community. And even though it'll be a virtual work environment, it's an experience nonetheless, and it's one I'm looking forward to. Generally, it was a good experience. Sometimes there was a bit of a delay before the lectures were actually uploaded, which made it a bit more difficult to schedule what things needed to be done and when I'd do them. And I would like to see that happen more on time in the future. I, I really appreciate the support that's been given. Being able to discuss some of our plans and goals before beginning the project was useful to make sure we didn't start heading down the wrong path. I think it would be good if this were generally available for all modules. Well, to be honest, I was quite surprised about how quick the transitions were to remote teaching. And speaking about this project in particular, the mentors and the lecturers were both super supportive throughout, providing us weekly feedback and drop-in sessions for any questions we might have had. Feedback was also encouraged and quickly taken on board, which was great because we're all working from different places and sometimes even halfway across the world. So getting everyone in the same room was really close to impossible. Well, I guess the same video chat to be more accurate. And working remote has definitely been a challenge for us all, but by nature of this group project, it meant we were not working alone. Our group, for instance, had meetings throughout the week where we worked on and evaluated our work as the project progressed. But most importantly, it was something we all enjoyed working on together, which made it a whole lot easier. So overall, it has been an interesting experience. One that we're still learning from, to be fair, but one that I guess you could say we're getting a hang of. So when coronavirus hit, obviously Imperial unexpectedly closed and immediately the department had to go and create lectures for an online format and of course there were a few teething issues uh, lectures weren't necessarily on time but that's because we need they need to be recorded from home and people had to get equipment set up at home over the course of the weeks that's rapidly improved and in drp it's evident to see it's improved our lectures have been 
I would say just the same standard as if we were there, except they're adapted for our unique situation that we are in now. A good example is our lectures tend to be two hours, so we have sort of 50 minute sessions with 10 minute breaks. But what the department has done, which I think was really good for me and helpful for me, because working from home is really hard, they kind of shrunk those lectures into smaller, smaller videos. We still have the full two hours worth of content, except now they're in 20 minute videos, 20 minute videos, 20 minute videos, let's say, I don't know, about five 20 minute videos. And that's really helped because now I'm not necessarily sitting and watching someone speak at me for two hours at home when there's a lot of distractions going on all around. So I think the department's done really well adapting to the unique situation that we're in. And I think they're also listening to all our feedback. So we've given feedback on what's working and what isn't and the queuing system, for example, for labs. And they've been listening to our ideas and they've really done well, I think, as a department in general. But needless to say, I really can't wait to come back to campus and have labs available to us and have lectures in actual lecture halls. <laughs>